This video is sponsored by the following people. Please click the links in the description below. So now you've got it quenched, you've got to uh, keep it straight. And we come back to this old problem of distortion. How do you keep it straight? The method I use, which works well, and if anybody wants to try it, just phone me and I'll try and help you through it if it will work in your situation. You've got to quench it enough. The critical time when you're quenching, you know, you take carbon steel now. Stainless steel is different, but then is the same, but numbers are different. But take a piece of carbon steel. You're probably going to be around about 850 degrees. It could be down at 780, it could be up at 900, but let's call it 850 for average. Nearly all of them have got a critical point in the cooling. So you put it into the oil and now that piece of steel starts quenching quite quickly because you've got the right grade of oil is, is ripping the heat out of that hot piece of metal you've got a critical point that's around about 600 degrees so we have a little curve you, you can actually get a graph a triple t diagram a time temperature transformation diagram and each steel has one relevant to itself and it's time and temperature and or temperatures up there times down the bottom and you see a curve and it will tell you if, if your cooling rate is such and such you will get this structure formed in the steel if you cool it too slowly you get structures that you don't want if you cool it fast enough you'll get pure martensite which is what you do want and we have what we call in here it's about 600 degrees so there's always a critical point at 600 degrees you need to cool from your hardening temperature and you put it into the oil you've got to get below 600 degrees within a set period of time for something like a 1080 steel that might be one two three three, four seconds. Well, it depends on how thick your, well, no, it depends on how thick your steel is. That determines how quickly it cools. But it's around about that time period. If it's a high-end stainless steel, that might be several minutes before you've got to get down below that. I think the general rule that I've heard banded about for averages on, on stainless steels is get it below 600 within two minutes. So therefore you can air harden it. You can slap stainless steel between two steel plates or two aluminium plates. That'll cool it down plenty quick enough. That kind of quenching works well. On the carbon steels, it's a bit more different. So what I do, I quench it into oil until I know it's down well below that the knee as we call it so well below 600 degrees and it's very simple a piece of oil sitting on a piece of hot metal will automatically ignite and if any of you watch Forged in Fire you'll know how those guys might love to make their oil catch fire while they're quenching their steel but if that that oil will auto ignite at about 450 degrees so if I lift my blade out of the oil and it doesn't catch fire it is below 450 degrees at that point that piece of metal is still soft as anything. It's cooling down, but it has not started to harden. It only starts to harden when you get down to quite a low temperature. And as I've mentioned before, you're, you're quenching it fast enough to create a structure in there called martensite. And every steel has a set of temperatures. It's called the MS, which is your martensite start. And you get your M90, the point at which 90% of martensite is formed. M50, 50% of it is transformed to martensite. And this is all as it's cooling down. So it starts at the MS when the martensite starts and you get the M10, M50, M90. MF is when you get the finish. Most carbon steels don't have an MS above about 250, 280 degrees. So if you can catch that piece of steel between 450 and say 250 and get it into a clamp and force it flat, you then got more time for it to cool down. It doesn't matter if it cools down a bit slow, it can now take another 30 seconds, 50 seconds, a minute, two minutes to cool right down. So the procedure we use here, Clark Knives with our heat treatment service, is we partially quench till we're into this safe zone between 450 and 250, quickly whip it out, smack it into a a pneumatic press press it flat and let the hardening process finish we get the right hardnesses we've got the right equipment here to test the hardness with and generally that takes all the bending out and i tell you now sometimes i put knives into my press they've come out of the, out of the hardening furnace they've gone into that furnace dead straight i lay them in that press and they can be bent up five millimeters at each end particularly some of the stainless steels that i know's come in from overseas on a coil but press it flat, let the transformation within the steel go through the hardening operation while it's pressed flat, and they generally tend to come out flat. Yes, it is a bit of a faff. Those of you who've got plate quenching facilities, uh, you can experiment with that. You, you need to be able to test it with uh, your hardness that you've, you've got it right. But if you can partially quench and then get it into your plates, press it flat, it does work very, very well. As I say, it's the method we use here for our, our heat treatment service, and uh, we normally get stuff fairly straight. That is the quenching side. The quenching side is as critical as getting it hot in the first place to the right temperature. Really where we get to, we've now got it hard. If you enjoyed this heat treatment series with Graham Clark, please hit that like button. Comment below if you would like to see Graham talk about specific things about the heat treatment of your blades. See you again in another knife making video and thank you all for watching.